Okay, that's uh, that was part two of chapter 24. Uh, 30 minutes. I'm pretty sure I don't have a watch either. <laughs> I don't have any money. Um, what was I reading? God returns for vengeance, passes the cup of his wrath to Christianity and Gentiles in general, has a reckoning with the shepherds. I bring the wrath and I bring the reckoning. Moshiach, God's righteous servant, who heed and revere him. Has a reckoning with the shepherds of the Jewish people. Oh, who heed and revere him, his flock. Oh, oh, I get it. Has a reckoning with the shepherds of the Jewish people that heed and revere him, the flock, and appoints his servant and shepherd, David, that's what he calls Moshe, to tend and rule among the flock, among them. Doesn't say over them right there. Okay, last one. Jews for Judaism commentary on Isaiah 53.10. This is their 53.10. And the Lord decided to crush and afflict him if his soul would acknowledge guilt. I mean, I've gone over this. Your soul can't do anything. It's the DNA of your, of your, of your person when combined with spirit is you. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say when they say if his soul, they mean himself. I don't know if they do or not. And would acknowledge guilt. If he would acknowledge guilt. Guilt for what? He would see offspring and live long days and the purposes of God will succeed through his hand. This is used for Judaism. At this point, the prophetic narrator moves away from the voices of the shocked onlookers and gives us his own perspective of the suffering Suffering of the servant. The emphasis changes according to the spiritual needs of the respective speakers. There isn't much spiritual benefit to be gained by focusing on the guilt of others. It is for this reason that the kings of nations focus on their own guilt. Again, how does he know this? As it relates to the suffering of the servant. That's right. The kings and nations are going to be. <laughs> Never mind. And for the same reason, the focus shifts to the guilt of the servant when addressing the servant. After all, the audience of the prophet is the people of Israel. <laughs> well, they are the chosen people, but he's got a greater audience than just Israel. The prophet tells us that God's, this is still Jews for Judaism, the prophet tells us, that would be Isaiah in 53, that God desired to afflict the servant. The purpose, I have crushed with disease, but an affliction can be that. Afflicted by God, you can be born this figure. It's an affliction by God, and I was. The purpose is, the purpose of Israel's suffering from Israel's perspective is to refine him. That's true, just like the fire refiner. As a loving father rebukes his son, so does God put Israel through the crucible of exile. Yes, he did. Wouldn't stop sinning. In order, and of course the Christians get away with that because they say, oh, we don't have sin anymore. Jesus, I believe in Jesus and the resurrection. They don't have to worry about it. In order for the suffering to accomplish its, its purpose, the servant needs to acknowledge and to recognize his own guilt. The servant. That's, the, that's all Jewish people gather together as one man in Israel. The servant. Needs to acknowledge his own guilt. Where is that? Where can I find that? I got to hear all Jews say they're guilty. Why? Because you can't, they're not going to, and they shouldn't have to. But of course, you know, this is what Kravitz says. Wolf Michael Skolbeck, actually, I don't, I don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure it's Kravitz. He seems to be the number one guy 
at Jews for Judaism. No created being is free of guilt. And by acknowledging guilt, we come closer to God's truth. Isaiah, Daniel, Ezra, and Nehemiah were all righteous people, yet they all acknowledged their own guilt, together with the sins of the nation. Okay. There's four. <laughs> the prophet goes on to tell us the reward that the servant will experience as a result of acknowledging his guilt. The servant will see his physical progeny, his children, walking in his footsteps in his days will be lengthened. Long life. These two blessings are not unrelated. No individual saint is guaranteed long days. <laughs> but through his progeny, the servant perseveres and outlasts his persecutor. The might, the splendor, and the power of those who persecuted the Jew have long faded away, while the Jews still praise. So America is still the most powerful country in the world, Mr. Kravitz. Rabbis don't, I, 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 you know, rabbi doesn't mean anything to me. You may as well say kindergarten teacher, doesn't they? This, I'm a prophet of God. I live with God. God is within me and controls me 100%. And always, even physically, spin me like a top if he wants to. I know his power like the back of my hand. I know he's orchestrating and has orchestrated the entirety of my life from birth, though not revealing himself to me until I was 50. And that entirety of that time, he kept me away from religion because he wanted a blank slate to teach. He didn't want me to have any preconceived notions. I didn't know Jesus had died for sin. I, that's what Christian believe. I didn't know that there was a rift between Christianity and, Ju and, and Judaism, the Jewish people. I didn't know any of these things. I just avoided. Somebody started talking religion at a party, I'd excuse myself and go get a beer. <laughs> I just wasn't going to have any of it. It's not a sin to drink a beer. The might, the splendor, and the power of those who persecuted the Jew have long faded away. While the Jew still prays the same prayers and studies the same text with freshness and vitality. It is the same Jew that stirred the fanatical hatred of the church fathers, the Muslim Crusaders, the Muslim Almohad, I don't know what any of this is, the Inquisitors, the Ukrainian soldiers, blah, 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 and the Nazis. These and many like them have come and gone, but the Jew is still here. Well, that's true, and it's slaughterful, and it is from suffering. I say that all the time. Suffering makes you stronger. It's a refinement, just like the fire refinement I've been in, with the six big words, punishment, wounded, maltreated, crushed, bruised, chastised. Day in and day out for 16 years. Started out pretty slow, but it has gotten beyond any belief I could have ever had what it is now. Hold on, I lost my place. Oh, there it is. The greatest gift that God has granted his servant is the promise that God's own purpose in this world will be accomplished through him. Israel, I guess. The righteous of Israel are called God's armor bearers. God allowed them to join him in bringing his light to the world. <laughs> I'm bringing wrecking and wrath, not bringing light. Don't forget the word vengeance. I see this exaltation, messianic, uh, and it's like uh, a world at peace. And God starts out with, this is my day. It's a day of vengeance. <laughs> well, servant. You need to raise me up high. I don't think you can do the Jews for Judaism or Mr. Singer. 
I don't think you can do it. But how do you take God's wrath? You're a servant. You're supposed to do these things. God needed a boat. He had no building. Servant. God needed a temple. Got David and Solomon to do it. You know, he, he's not going to go. He's not going to go just. <laughs> I don't know. Do bad things to the Christians? No. So to you, how are you going to hurt them the most? Uh, Christians. We told you in the town. He's here. We know Jews for Jews. We told you, saying you're wrong. It's not us. It's not Israel. We know they're wrong. And that's not prophetic. That's absolute knowledge coming from God. That will hit the, whether they acknowledge you saying it or not, or they say, no, it's not. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. But it'll hit them in the, it like a punch in the stomach. And I, if you give me a voice, I can make your anti-missionaries look just like little kids in kindergarten again. With the arrows God has given me. My commentary on 53.10. But the Lord chose to crush him by disease. Oh my gosh, I've done 53.10 to death. No, this is the last one. Okay. That's what you say to God. Okay. <laughs> if he made himself an offering for guilt, you might see all spring and have a long life. And that through him the Lord's purpose might prosper. Okay, Midrash form. But the Lord chose to crush him by the disease. God's righteous servant will be familiar with the disease and his life crushed because of the disease that he is afflicted with by the hand and power of God. That, if he made himself an offering for guilt, it is an offer of oneself and so, you know, it's you to God for the guilt of sinning of the Jewish people in return for possibly seeing his children having long life as a covenant. The offering is only a test of his devotion to God, as was the binding of Isaac. When the test of devotion is set before the righteous servant, the new covenant has already arrived. Because if God's testimony the angel of the covenant that you desire, which is sin forgiveness from Jeremiah 31, 31, I'm pretty sure, is already here. That's why it leaves early. It's really for Jesus, not so much for my test of devotion, which is pretty easy. I've been told I was going to die. I was going to do anything to not die. Might get a long life, huh? Don't make it tough on me. Okay, I'll, do, I'll myself forget what happens. You go through my fire refinement, then you make the many righteous with your knowledge that I'm going to teach you during the fire. I said, okay. Then I find out the next week, he says, tells me, you know, your pain does not mean anything to me. <laughs> he hadn't really started hurting me. Yet. I was like, huh, okay. I didn't know. He didn't really explain the fire to me. I didn't get the six big words. Wounding, crushing, bruising, etc. And all, okay, the angel of the covenant's here, and all the inequities and sins of the Jewish people forgiven, and God remembers them no more. The guilt and emotion is from not following the laws and teachings of God by the Jewish people that are. Uh, the witnesses of the first six verses in quotations. God's forgiveness of the sins removes the guilt. The test of devotion is revealed here with Jeremiah 31, providing when God is coming with the new covenant, the time to come, that is manifested in Malachi 3 by the angel of the covenant. The God of there are only two covenants that have not been delivered. The new covenant for a time to come in Jeremiah with sin and forgiveness and the covenant of friendship. The covenant of friendship comes with the shepherd, servant, and an anointed one of God who he calls David. The angel of the covenant must be the angel of the new covenant. 
the phrase, he is already coming, means he arrives before God who comes to covenant with a Gentile. I've covered that. Before he returns to his temple, he must have a visible representation to speak and write his words as Moses did to have the temple rebuilt for its return. Without Moses, how did you get your first covenant? Because God only talks to one man at a time for the most part. He did a little bit with Aaron, uh, but even he says it was a lot different. God, uh, Moses gave him the, God gave him to Moses. Moses gave him the words to say. And God just uh, used his power more than anything so that Aaron would deliver him the, what, when and the way God wanted him delivered. So he wasn't, I don't think he was talking directly to Aaron. <coughs> God has to speak to the man and tell him that it was God that afflicted him with disease and crushed his life. Yes, you have to know. It must be a life-threatening disease, for God tells him that he might receive long life after choosing to crush him with disease. And in verse 12, he is exposed to death. God also has to prepare him to be a prophet, as he did Ezekiel. Forehead, brazen, heart as Adam and in other words, able to take on all the Jews who are going to throw at me who don't believe a word I say. And I suspect there's going to be some really bad words in there. God has to prepare him as he did Ezekiel in the fire of refinement, in the hand of God by his words and power while teaching him the scripture to make the many righteous by his knowledge. God is not asking the man to give up his life as a sacrifice. That would be against his teachings to the Israelites through his prophet, not to sacrifice their children. And the purpose of the man offering himself for guilt is to receive long life. And I have. Again, find somebody else with my story. Stage four lung cancer. Untreatable. A month to live. Never seen a doctor again. When the planes hit New York 22 years ago, I even became a triathlete. I've never had any effects of lung cancer. Recently, I got some x-rays again. They showed me my x-rays when they told me I had stage 4 lung cancer. And it's just white spots all over my lungs. Well, God made sure I looked at some x-rays here not too long ago. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, there's nothing there. God said, I told you, I removed it. I said, well, I kind of figured. I never really suffered from it. The colon cancer beat me down to nothing, but uh, really nothing from lung cancer. No shortness of breath, no coughing, or whatever else the poor souls go through. The reality is there is no guilt or sin for the man to bear. The new covenant with sin forgiveness of all the Jewish people on earth has arrived before the offering is made, and no vicarious suffering for the sins of others has occurred. That is why it's only a test. Okay, this is really primarily for the Christians and, and to show that at the time why Jesus left out describing Elijah with Malachi 3, he leaves out the angel of the covenant that you desire. Okay, because that means if his cousin is Elijah, who is the messenger, and receives the covenant from the angel, that means there are no sins by the Jewish people. And Jesus did not teach that, did he? No, he changed the carrier and made up something. I'm going to be crucified. Scourged and crucified, made it up. He's supposed to go in there and defeat Rome. I guess he gave that ghost up too, didn't he? Just like on the cross, Father, Father, why'd you forsake me? He knows he's about to die. But he knows 53, and he thinks he's 53, thinks he's the righteous servant, as do two billion Christians. And he finds out on the cross he's not going to get long life. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? What else can it mean? That's my interpretation. And he gave up the ghost and he done. Well, like I said, I was in the back of an ambulance for eight hours. This is one day of my suffering. 
with a bullet hole through my abdomen, piercing my bladder, colon, and intestines, one side to the other, at an angle. And uh, I was bleeding out. I'm in the back of an ambulance, and I'm getting weak, and I want to go to sleep. If you ever try to fight, when you're really sleepy, it is difficult. I mean, it's almost painful that you don't go to sleep. I had to stay awake for eight hours. And I did not give up the ghost. I just kept saying, you have got to hurry. That's all I could say, really. God knew this before the covenant with the man. A covenant that if he makes himself an offering for guilt, God might not let him die of the disease. A test of devotion, trusting that God will not let him die. I know, it's not a really severe test, but it's really pointing more towards Jesus. God had Isaiah write Isaiah 53, just as he had Moses wrote the Torah, at his command and direction. The multiple purposes of how Isaiah 53 is written were no more possible for Isaiah to know than Moses could know the multiple purposes of the Torah and the 1613 laws of God for the Jewish people derived from his books. Isaiah 53 was written with the knowledge of God that the Gentiles would take the book of the children of the book and call it their own. That they would do it based on the animal sacrificial atonement worship laws of the Torah. And I believe he knew at least one Jewish person would do that. And of course we know that's Toby a singer. He stands by himself on that one by the way. You don't hear Jews from Judaism saying that. The primary purpose of verse 10 is not the test of devotion. It is to make certain that the animal sacrificial atonement worship laws of the Torah cannot be used for the man described. That's what he did with Christians. He used the man in 53. Really? It's written so you're written out of it. The man is afflicted by God. He's disfigured. Lame, blind, something. I'm disfigured at birth. He's crushed with disease. You can't offer an animal for sin forgiveness in Leviticus for a blemished animal. Jesus, unblemished. Me, blemished. I can fit it, and I do. I am the righteous servant most yet, but Jesus can't be. Plus, he's not a Gentile. God comes from a dom. And of the Jewish people, none are with him. But he's got his guy, Moshiach, who he appoints with the reckoning to be the only teacher he recognizes. So he's with him. His righteous servant, Moshiach. Moshiach is with him, coming from Adam. That would be coming from Texas to Israel. Well, Texas, Christian country, and uh, land of Gentiles primarily, by majority. It is the only reason God would crush a man with disease to make him be his servant. You cannot offer an animal with defect, an animal that is blemished, so God blemishes the man. No man would refuse God, and God does not need a man's permission to make him a servant. He is God. In the book of Ezekiel, God seized him. He didn't make a covenant with him or anything. He made him suitable for the purpose of being a prophet to the Assyrian Babylon exile in God's fire of a fire, pending to the Made him stay in his house, removed him from society, pinned him to the ground for over a year. That's it. Whew. Done with 53. Next up, chapter 25. Again, redoing all of the book. Because the other videos have been reposted too many times. If you see a really bad one, you, well, I explained how to find the ones that are coming from this book now. I'm still reposting the old ones. And uh, every time, it takes about four to eight hours to get this memory card downloaded or uploaded. Not on the press from the camera. Uh, it doesn't take that long with the ones I've posted before. I don't know why that is. It's the resurrection of the dead. See, the whole book is not about 53. I mean, that's its primary purpose in the day of the Lord. We're going to talk about the resurrection of the dead. 25. 
Thank you for watching.